The Pocketbook Basic Lux 3 is yet another release from Pocketbook 2022, or technically 2021, December 23rd. This is yet another 6 inch device. Now we say that because they already have the Touch Lux, the Basic Lux, the Basic, and the Touch HD 3, and they're all 6 inch devices. That's a good and bad thing depending on how you want to look at it. It's bad because there's a lot of units, but it's good because, well, there's a lot of choice. And this one is less than $100. It features an e-ink card to display 1024 by 758 with a smart light and a dual core processor. And it only weighs 155 grams, which makes it one of the lightest e-readers in the modern era. So let's dive in a little bit and see how basic or not basic this basic Lux is. Although this does have a smart light and dual core processor, there is no touch screen, which means if you guys are very new to this, you can't touch the screen. You do have a D-pad, which is a directional pad. So you have up, down, left, and right. And to be completely honest, it's pretty good. Very responsive, very intuitive. And when you click on something, it goes pretty quick. So not only is this one of the most responsive devices that doesn't have a touch screen, it's actually one of the most responsive pocketbook devices in general. It is very snappy and quick, and it's pretty easy to know where you are on the page at all times. In fact, they add shortcuts as well. Pressing the page back button is going to take you to the home menu. Simply pressing up and down and left and right is going to give you the easiest route to each respective place. If you go up, you simply press OK to do the drop down, and everything's pretty straightforward and gets highlighted in a very obvious way and it's honestly not the worst thing in the world seeing that this is under a hundred dollars and that is not something we want to understate someone outside of the big three like pocketbook onyx etc for them to make something under a hundred dollars is nothing short of a miracle it's very easy for amazon it's very easy for kobo to do something like that but not a smaller company like pocketbook regardless of the fact they've been in the business for 10 years under apps, you get your generic services that we've seen time and time again. Dropbox for Pocketbook, Pocketbook Cloud, etc. You also get Chess, Klondike, and Sudoku. But something interesting on this unit, because of the lack of Sketch, for example, there is no Sketch or Scribble on this, you get Snake. Page turns can be done one of two ways. You can press the left and right on the D-pad, or you can press the very large page turn buttons left and right, back and forward like that. Unfortunately, you're going to be hardwired to want to long press things on the screen, and that's just not the way to do it. You actually have to press the center button, and then you can start doing things from here. You're going to go down to select text, in which case it's going to highlight the very center, and then you can move up and down to get the text you want. It's not very good and that's just the inherent problem with this because there are thousands of elements on the screen here you have to go down to the individual one press ok and then start your long navigation to do a highlight press ok and then go back into the menu to do other things like table of contents close the book screenshot etc reading settings is where you're going to change all of your fonts and your page layout so your margins and your font size at the bottom by scrolling like this everything changes live in the background albeit it does take a second you can also go over to here and choose your fonts on the left and regular italicized bold on the right curb your complaints for a moment while we show PDFs. Why? Because everyone asks for PDFs, which is why we've shown it on every possible device since the dawn of e-readers themselves. This is the PDF experience. We do not recommend you buy this for PDFs, but to be completely honest, this is actually handling PDFs quicker and better, and it looks better than some other devices we can name. In fact, the Amazon Paperwhites couldn't even handle PDFs until the second generation. So all things considered, it's not terrible. You even have the ability to select text because it will scan for text elements on the screen. But the cursor is so small, it is very difficult to see. Although you can do it and you can make highlights. Something else surprising is the intuitive way it handles zoom. 
You simply just press up to go towards and press back to go out. There's no minimap, but it's actually not that bad. It's a pretty good way of zooming and it works pretty adequately. The screen's resolution in PPI is more than adequate enough for manga, especially because it's a 6 inch. And when things are really small, they just naturally look more dense and more crisp. It's like trying to find and watch 4K on a 5 inch screen. You can't really take advantage of it. So although it's not the super latest Carta 1250 HD, it's still very crisp, beautiful contrast, super sharp, and it looks fantastic. Something else interesting about this is that it is one of the few units in the modern era that actually has an SD card slot, which means you can put SD cards in it with all your content and have everything sideloaded. You don't have to have an SD card to do this either, but it is nice. You can just connect it with a USB, although it is a micro USB. Because this is not a flush screen and bezel, it is a sunken screen, that means there are less layers of things in between your eyes and the viewable surface. There's no capacitive digitizer for a touch. There's no Wacom layer for the pen. There's not even a glass on top for the protective surface. There's simply just the screen and the gel layer baked on from factory and that's it. There's no IR, there's no touch, there's nothing. So the picture quality ends up being pretty nice when pitted up against devices that are flush screen and bezel. Fun fact, if you press the center button on images, you do get some other options. You can set images individually side-loaded or pre-loaded as your boot logo or the power off logo. So basically, you can choose your own screen savers and background images. This also has a file manager so you can go through the internal storage or SD card and basically go through anything. You can go through photos, you can check out things that you've put in downloads, PDFs, you can make your own folders as well. So the fact that it has a file manager that allows you to go through everything is actually not bad. But out of the actual gigs that they say on the box, you only get 6.6 .6 after all of the operating system, the UI elements, and everything else that is used to develop the infrastructure and framework to allow you to use your pocketbook. The notes thumbnail is a little bit strange because it kind of looks like the old pocketbook scribble application thumbnail or what you would expect on a note taking device and it isn't anything to do with a pen or stylus. It's simply a collection of all your highlights and the long presses you've done on all your content. 2022 also has us very excited about glow lights. This glow light is fabulous. It looks really good, has great distribution, isn't too overexposed and doesn't have any weird graying anywhere. Changing the glow light, as we said earlier, takes a little bit of time. But if you can get used to that, it's not all that bad. We've said it a few times, but we have to give credit where credit is due. For Pocketbook to be outside of the big three and still make a fully consumer available product for under $100 is absolutely fantastic. We don't see that every day, and for a company that's been around for 10 years, it's a tremendous feat to be able to get a rock bottom, race to the bottom price in this day and age. It doesn't have a touch screen, but it does have an SD card, a good glow light, and a fantastic screen with directional and physical buttons on the bottom. For GoodyReader.com and a review of the Pocketbook Basic Lux 3, this is Peter.